Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I want to step you through a little exercise I did with a customer the other day. And I'm going to call this Wi-Fi testing. We'll call this part one because I'm sure there'll be some other things I'll do later on with other tools. Um, we'll call this a survey or site survey with ping. Good old ping. So, client called me, asked if there was a way to do a survey type review about his uh, regarding his wireless equipment. Doesn't have any tools. His access points do not have the ability to display the client signal strength nor noise. I thought to myself, well, the only option you really have is good old ping. And that kind of surprised him. And he said, what, a, what would ping do for me? And I said, just hold on, we'll get there. Let's do this first. Let's put the office layout out just so we can see what it looks like. And of course, um, a real building isn't a box, but this is good enough for me. It's two floors. And I just wanted him to generically tell me where the cameras were in relationship to the access point. From there, I explained the methodology. I told him I wanted to reduce the amount of Wi-Fi traffic just for the duration of the test, just so we don't get any skewed data. So uh, nobody's allowed to watch the cameras, there's no streaming, there's no managing the cameras during this test. Just kind of an ideal scenario. I want to try to keep the wireless as quiet as possible. So now that we're going to ping him, I thought, well, if we're going to ping, we've got to make this worthwhile. So what we're going to do is a thousand byte payload. So now we've got some data in the packet, not just a little tiny dribble. A hundred millisecond interval. So instead of pinging one per second, like Microsoft does, we're going to ping more often. I'll explain why in a bit. I want to send 500 pings. I want a good sample. While I'm pinging, I just want to see the statistics. I don't need to see ping, reply, ping, reply. I don't need to see that. And then it would really be cool if we can log this output. As I just said, Microsoft has a fixed one second interval. You can't change it. So that's why I suggested HR ping, because we can do all that. So the command would look something like this. HR ping, and then the host name or the IP, then dash L. Yep, that's an L. I know the font makes it look like a capital I. So that's an L. 1000, so there's my length. Dash S is the interval, 100 milliseconds. Dash N is the number of pings, which is 500. And then at the end, we can put a dash Y or dash Q, which basically says statistics only. The last thing is the logging the output, which would just simply be a dash F at the end of that. And you'll see that in a moment. Theory here is if we send many large packets at a 100 millisecond interval, we can do several things. We increase the chance of dropping a packet. We provide more accurate latency values because we're doing this more than once a second. The assumption is that if the camera doesn't have a clear signal from the access point or the access point doesn't have a good beam on the good old webcam, latency will go up as well as possibly dropping some packets. The ping results can be validated against some RF or Wi-Fi tools when I show up. In a production wireless network, I would advise sending large packets with a short interval for long durations. You don't want to run this 724 on a wireless network because you will probably cause some problems. So we set up our test and of course uh, you know me and my batch files so I said hey let's write a little batch file and all the batch file had was the ping commands that's it. So that's all it was and by doing this then he just runs the batch file and everything gets written to this file. With HR ping it appends to the file it doesn't overwrite it. So at the end we'll just have all the statistics in a text file which is pretty cool. So I said run this five times and then I asked them to delete or ignore or remove the highest value and the lowest value or test and then average the remaining three. Here's the results. Um, we're going to see the map again in a second uh, and we get an idea here where things aren't that great. So camera 55 is at the far end. He has the highest packet loss, 42% packet loss, which is not very good. Packet uh, camera 50, this guy, had the second highest packet loss, which is odd because it's actually closer. These two are the ones at the end of the building. So this is ordered kind of in proximity of the access point. So right close by, close, further, further, further away. So this was kind of odd to see. Uh, the other thing um, I explained was even though it's physically closer, this guy's closer than this guy, well, it all depends on construction, any local noise in, uh, interference, the camera orientation. Uh, there's all sorts of things that could actually affect this loss value. So don't just go with one little value. He said he wanted to keep the packet loss to 10% or less. And I said, all right, well, in that case, pass, fail, fail, pass. 
then I asked him about uh, latency and he wasn't quite sure and I said well with video and audio you got to pay attention to that because if it's slow then that's just as bad as dropping stuff and if you take a look at the average these two guys have the worst latency so after we talked a bit he said alright I'd like my latency to be 10 milliseconds or less and I said okay fail fail pass pass so by doing that we know this guy's good him marginal and these two guys mm, not so much so there we go so now he's got a little review of what we found out with just using ping and now we can proceed with some other tools to find out why it's not working as well and we can try to provide some kind of solution or remedy to make this thing work better that's it so I hope that was helpful. Have a good day. Bye for now.